Well, hello friends. Welcome back to the shop and welcome back to this uh, series that I think is only going to be this video on the restoration of this custom build with a beautiful dog's head, spaniel head on it. Uh, this pipe comes to us from uh, through the kindness of Doug Owen from the cargo hold who uh, sent it for my friend Jack Kurtz who was looking for a, a pipe and you can get that story in the previous video if you're interested. So I have gone ahead and cleaned the inside of this pipe and I did that off camera just because it's not a lot of stuff that's very conducive to camera work but we've got a nice uh, nice clean uh, reamed bowl. It's nice and smooth. I, I took some sandpaper in there and sanded it a bit uh, just to try to give a little roughness to it because we are going to be doing some pipe mortar on this. Uh, clean the airway, you know, plenty of uh, bristled pipe cleaners and alcohol to, to get that clean. And clean the stem, and actually the stem was really very, very clean inside. Um, so Doug must have spent some time cleaning this up, or whoever he got it from spent some time cleaning it up. It was The stem was, was like new on the inside. Uh, the airway did need some work, and of course the reaming. Okay, so we got a couple things we need to address. The first uh, is going to be this this rim, and I'm going to do that using the method that you've seen me use before, which is the Murphy's oil soap. And I've got a jar here of Murphy's oil soap that I use, and I'm just going to use a pipe cleaner to apply that. Just put a little bend in the pipe cleaner, makes a nice little brush. And let's see, I'm going to want to stand to put that on while the oil soap sits. So I don't know exactly how this works. Um, I don't even know exactly what Murphy's oil soap is. It doesn't really have any oil in it from what I understand. I'm just going to glob this around. So I'm going to apply a generous coating of this to the, to the rim. But somehow it seems to just do a great job of breaking down that buildup that that you get on the top of the pipe. Okay, so we generously apply it, and then we're going to let that sit for 20 minutes. Just set it off to the side. Time isn't important. Um, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, not going to matter. I wouldn't let it go overnight because the 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 oil soap does it kind of congeals and dries up, and that's what you want. That that's when it seems to be most effective at removing that buildup. And that takes approximately 20 minutes. So if you go a little bit longer, that's fine. Uh, while we're waiting for that, let's turn our attention to the stem. So the stem, um, I've cleaned the inside of this, and I went over to the buffer and buffed it just because I wanted to see how much work I might have to do on this. And in fact, there is some minor oxidation on the stem that I'm going to want to get rid of because if I don't do that, when we file this out, it, it's going to look odd. This is going to be dark black and this is going to be gray. So we want it to be nice and consistent. But the first thing we want to do is deal with these uh, chatter marks. Uh, there's at least a couple of tooth marks here and there's some odd dents here. So to do that, we're going to heat this up and we're going to use just a, a standard heat gun. Um, I don't really have a set time that I hold it over the, 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 the jet of the heat gun. I just kind of hold it there for a minute or so and then check it and put it back and check it. You don't want to get it so hot that it would remove any bend in the, and you can see this does have a my, very, very slight bend. I don't want to remove that so that's kind of, I'll be watching that and I'll be watching for the, the dents to rise. And that'll help because it'll it'll minimize the amount of Vulcanite that we're actually going to have to file and sand away on this. So let me do that. Uh, I'm going to do it off camera. It's just holding the darn thing over a very loud heat gun, so you don't need to see that. And I'll bring you back when we're ready for that. All right, back from the heat gun. Um, it did its job. You never get the dents all the way out, but they certainly have raised a bit. And now it's just simply going to be a matter of doing some filing and then some sanding. So I'm using this file here. This is a Nicholson double zero. It's got safe edges on both sides. 
Um, it's fairly aggressive, but that's what we want because we want to be able to quickly take this down. Uh, if you get one of these, I, I just a sort of as a public service announcement, the safe edges are not really all that safe. <laughs> um, it's a good idea to, to put them on a on a stone, you know, an oil stone or something like that, and just grind them for a little bit because uh, the way these are made, you get a lot of burrs on the side, and you can chew up a button pretty badly with that. So all we're going to do is use the button the back of the button as a guide and we're just gonna come around like this and you can see this vulcanite just files beautifully so it doesn't take many swipes to get that tooth chatter out and we're not you know dramatically decreasing the amount of ebonite, vulcanite uh, that we have in the bite zone, so it's not going to in any way weaken the, the stem. Um, now what I'm doing is just making sure that that round is correct all the way over. Just kind of arcing it over. And that's it. You know, now we're going to do a little bit more here because there's that odd raised area. I'll just take a few strokes to get rid of. That's pretty much got it, and sanding will deal with the rest. Uh, so now let's we'll flip over to this side. That was actually the worst of it. On this side, we'll do the same. And I do not normally do this while holding the stem like this. I've got a block that I use, but I wanted to do as much of this on video as I can. And again, being careful to arc around that, that radius. And I think that's pretty good. A little dent right there on the edge. There we go, perfect. Now, um, we didn't have to take off very much ebonite at all, so there's no obvious transition here as I'm sliding my fingers, which is good. If there was, we would just do more aggressive sanding, but I think we're in excellent shape with this now. Um, there are a few dents in the button itself that we could try to ease out. Obviously, you got to be careful because you don't want to get rid of the button. But yeah, it's a little bit better. Again, sanding might be the the better option here. little bit more and one more thing I'll show you just a quick trick I'm, I'm turning it now on its side and I'm just gonna do one stroke along the back well maybe two strokes along the back just to clean up that crease and we'll do the same thing here again being careful to always follow the arc of the stem all right very good so, now, we made a mess. Now we have to start sanding. And to sand, I'm going to start with 220 grit and work my way up. Um, this is actually some old, uh, not 220 grit, I think this is 300. But I'm just using it for demonstration purposes. Uh, and what I'll do is I'm going to wrap it around a nail board like this. We've got this block that I've just drilled a bunch of holes in of various sizes, and this should fit into one of them. There we go. That's good. It doesn't have to be a perfectly tight fit. The reason I use that is that it lets me sand right up to that edge without having to worry about rounding it over. So I will clamp this in my vise, and this way I can sand and I can turn it and, and get all the, all the sides done. I'll start with 220. I'll work my way up to 800. Uh, I do that in four steps. And then this will be done and ready for the buffer, really. So let's uh, do that, and I'll bring you back uh, shortly. Okay, so it's been uh, about 30 minutes since we set this up. And hopefully you can see it, it's got a bit of a matte 
finish to it now. It's, it's not perfectly glossy like it was when we first put it on. And if I touch this, you know, there's, there's not much coming off, just a little bit on my finger. So that's what we're shooting for. Um, that hopefully has eaten up some of that surface uh, residue, what, whatever that is. It's, it's probably like cake that's formed by the uh, tobacco coming up over the top, but it, there's also going to be some tar and, and stuff from the, from the smoke itself that comes out of the top. Uh, just something that's going to build up over time. Okay, so next step, I'm not going to do this on, on camera because it makes a big mess, but I'm going to use a nice uh, new clean toothbrush, wet it, and then I'm just going to scrub this, and I'm going to scrub it quite a bit. And then it's kind of a rinse and repeat thing until you get this looking the way you want it to look. So I'll do that and I'll work on that stem and bring you back when we're uh, finished with those parts. All right, so that took uh, three applications and a lot of scrubbing, but you can see we got most of the gunk off. Uh, there is some scorching that we're not going to be able to do anything with. And you'll notice this is lightened and that will happen with this method. Most of the time, uh, just buffing it brings it back up and you don't have to add any additional stain, but we could always uh, put a bit of, of uh, stain on that. Probably a tan would match that. And we can come pretty close to the original color, so I'm not, not concerned about that. Um, the next step is the external cleaning, and I don't want to do much at all here. Uh, I've got, this is the toothbrush that I used on the top, and this is still a little bit damp. I can put a bit more water on it. If needed, and I'm just just taking a dropper bottle here and just dropping a little bit of water on it. And now I'm going to go ahead and in all the the rustications, just making sure that that's clean. You know, not not going crazy with it around the carving. Being gentle. I I don't want to remove that finish. I just want to clean it. And we'll continue this all the way around. That should be good. And then we'll just go down the shank here. Now there is an area I want to pay a little bit more attention to. But before I do that, let me get a damp paper towel. Just putting a little bit of water on a paper towel. And I'm just going to wipe that off. see we've you know removed a fair amount of dirt. Uh, the area I want to pay a little bit more attention to is is right against the band so you'll notice there's some darkening in there and what's caused that is that somebody probably more than one person buffed the pipe and did not cover the band and what happens when you buff metal uh, with triple or white diamond is that some of the metal comes off, mixes with the buffing compound, and then winds up getting reapplied to the briar. So if you're ever buffing a pipe like this, it's best to put some tape over this before you do so to avoid that black from coming out. So what I will do there is, again, just using this and maybe a little bit more vigorous scrubbing to try to get that cleaned up. I don't want to go to any great lengths, not because I don't want to do the work, but because I don't want to change anything that doesn't need to be changed. And I'll show you the right way to polish up a, a band like this, which is actually not to buff it. The, the, you can buff it. I mean, there, you, if you have a separate wheel for it and you take the time to go ahead and cover up your 
briar properly, then yeah, you can buff it. But if you're going to use the same wheel and you just want to run the buffer back and forth, you, you're going to create this problem. That seems to be better. The only blessing is that it doesn't tend to be very hard to get it off, but it just looks ugly. Yeah, I might do a little bit more of that off camera, but, but that's the, the basic idea. Okay, so how do you how do you polish that up? Well, it's it's really simple. That's a piece of four out steel bowl. And I'm just gonna put it on the band. A little bit of something stuck on the top there. That's nearly off. There we go. Let's do one or two more turns here. Yeah, this <laughs> I'm going to show off and show you how easy this is, and it turns out to be difficult. There's uh, a bit more buildup on this than I was expecting. Not sure what it is. making progress but there's still a few spots there but you can see how nice and, and shiny that comes up just from the steel wool and that works with uh, any silver band really I haven't tried it on gold um, that should work on brass for certain but I, have, I haven't tried it on, oops don't throw the pipe on the floor I haven't tried it on gold so I, I can't say that it would or would not work um, Gold's a softer metal than this uh, nickel silver. Uh, or this is sterling, actually, based on the hallmarks. There we go. That's that's done. So that is nice and shiny. And now when we do go to buff this, we'll put some tape around this so as to not buff the silver. And that should be good. All right. So... Other than retorting and pipe mortaring, uh, and possibly putting a little bit of stain on the top here, we're done with the stumble. So I'm gonna set the stumble aside, and we're gonna go ahead and do that sanding that I mentioned, because uh, I haven't gotten to that yet. So let's sand the stumble. Okay, so we've gone ahead and sanded this uh, at 220 grit, and then I took it over to the buffer and did a quick uh, buff with uh, Tripoli. And the reason I do that is, you know, it's, it's, it's far from done, obviously. We still need to do a lot of sanding. Uh, but it's, it's a good way to just see if there's any scratches that uh, I might need to do a little bit more work on. And this is actually looking pretty good. You know, we, we did get rid of the tooth chatter. So there, there's a couple of little dings. And right in here, the button's a little bit messed up. But that's about the best I'm going to be able to do without... Uh, removing too much of that button so we're gonna we're gonna be happy with that uh, sometimes you do this and you find out there's a big scratch that was left from a file or something so it's it's worth doing that quick buff with Tripoli after the 220 sanding so now we're going to proceed up through the grits uh, to get up to 800 and uh, I've had some questions about the sandpaper that I use this is actually uh, a material called Abernet it's a it's an open mesh sandpaper so it doesn't clog and uh, really very very good stuff uh, it's a little bit pricey to buy uh, I buy it by the roll but in the long run this is actually a lot cheaper than using uh, traditional paper sandpaper it just lasts longer and uh, I, I use a lot less of it so it's really nice stuff it's got a velcro backing on it which is convenient because I have a little strip of 
the other side of the Velcro on, on the bench and I can just stick these to it. Uh, works out pretty well. Okay, so we're gonna now continue with uh, the sanding and get this stem ready to go back. Okay, on so we have now gone up to 800 grit. Uh, pretty happy with this. Uh, I won't know for certain if I'm going to need to do micro mesh pads until uh, I take it to the buffer and I'm not quite ready to do that yet. So the next thing I do with these stems and this is just something I've always done. I don't have a good logic for why I do this but I just put a little bit of mineral oil on it and just rub that in over the whole surface of the stem. So I do this after I sand it. I think the reason, uh, at least what I'm telling myself, is that you know, I've revealed fresh ebonite when I sand it and I want to put a coat of oil on that to prevent it from oxidizing on me. But it does seem to help uh, just with the buffing and the shine later on. So I it's just something that I kind of routinely do even when I'm making new stems so I will leave that now uh, usually overnight um, just depending it um, I'm sure a couple of hours would be sufficient but it's just easier to leave it overnight uh, so I'm gonna set the stem aside now and get the mineral oil off my fingers it's a messy business this pipe restoration stuff okay uh, let's Turn our attention back to the stummel now. So the stummel is clean and essentially ready to buff. The only question we've got right now is whether or not we're going to put a little bit of stain on the top here. And I uh, normally I would yeah I'm going to go ahead and buff this before I before I make that decision. But I'm pretty certain I'm going to do it just because there's some spots around the edges here where the chips have sort of removed the stain, and I'd, I'd like this to be a nice. Uh, consistent surface. So what I'll do is I'm going to take it to the buffer and just buff it to see what we got and assuming it looks the way I think it's going to look we'll just put some stain uh, this is going to be a tan most likely to match this so we'll ju we're just going to stain the top and we'll let that sit overnight as well and then once that's done we'll we'll come back and we'll uh, oh you know what <laughs> before we do that we're going to retort this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the stem sit for a while, put the pipe back together, retort it, and then buff off the top, and then we'll decide whether or not we're going to put some stain on this. Okay, let's do that, and we'll be back All soon. Right, so we've uh, gone ahead and retorted this, and uh, we got the stem back on. Still needs to be buffed, but uh, everything's looking great. I did just lightly buff the top here just to see how that would look and as you can see it's not terrible I mean compared to the rest of the pipe it, it probably would be okay but there is this light area right up here that kind of goes into where these dings are and it just doesn't look right especially with the the front there so I'm going to just lightly uh, stain the rim with some tan leather dye and tan is usually a pretty good match for this particular finish, so I think we're going to be okay with that. And the reason I want to do as little as possible is I don't want to have to restain the whole pipe. So if I just do the rim, I should be able to get away with that. You can see that's really blending in nicely, and it usually dries lighter. And then I'm just going to try to get those those little nicks around the edge here without getting too much on the sides. Spot back here. Just touch up painting really. Alright, that's good. So we will give that, oh, I don't know, 10-15 minutes to dry and then we'll be able to move on to the next step which will be another light buff just to get rid of any excess stain and then we're going to go ahead and do the pipe mortar so while we're waiting for that to dry let me let me just move it aside and we'll go get the pipe mortar ready okay so if you haven't seen my pipe mortar video and you're interested in learning more about this I will put a link below to that video 
where I really go into a great amount of detail on what this stuff is. Um, I weigh it out and I'll, I'll tell you what I weighed out here and I just make several of these so that I've got them handy. Uh, so, you know, every so often when I'm getting low I'll get out the scale and I'll, I'll make up another batch. And you can see this separates, uh, you know, the, the lighter stuff was down here, the darker stuff was up here. And that will happen over time. So you got to be careful with this. If you are going to make up a big batch of it, you need to be prepared to shake it up every time you're going to use it. And that can make a mess because it's a lot of fine powder. So what we've got in here is uh, two grams of plaster of Paris, one gram of table salt, and 1.2 grams of activated charcoal. And that is just the proportions that I've come up with that seem to work well and give me enough usually for the kind of work I'm going to do here. Now, in some cases, I'll use two packets if I don't think it's going to be enough, but I, I think we're okay with this. And of course, we can always mix up more. So what I'm doing is just getting the, the powder away from one of these corners. And then we'll just take a pair of scissors and snip away the corner and just pour the powder into this container. Uh, this container is a, it's actually one of those magnetic parts holders that you get for free if you're, if you go at the right time to Harbor Freight. If you don't go at the right time, I think they're like $3 or something, they're pretty cheap. I like it because it's, it's pretty stable, you know, it's got that heavy magnet in the back, and, but it's also a nice smooth surface and it's, it's easy to mix. So like I was saying that the powders tend to separate. So the first thing you got to do with this is mix it. And you want to really make sure that you thoroughly mix this because the salt in particular, the table salt, is going to separate out. And you want that to be pretty evenly dispersed throughout. So we're just going to mix this around until we get a nice uniform gray. Break up any clumps of plaster that might be in there. You don't have to go crazy. That that's that's good enough. That's a lot better mixed than the way it was in the pouch. Okay, and that's what we're going for. Now I'm gonna this this is now dried enough. See nothing's coming off. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with the buffer, and I'll be right back, and we'll continue on with this part. Okay, we just uh, buffed that with some Tripoli, and you can see the stain has nicely filled in the uh, the parts that were a bit light, and is helping conceal those those few little nicks and dings around the edges. So happy with that, and it's a pretty good match for the rest of the pipe. So all looks good. Uh, to do the pipe mortar, we're going to set the stem aside because we do not need that. We are going to use a pipe cleaner to help us set the air hole at the bottom and let me use the narrow end of this tapered pipe cleaner and you know you you know what a pipe cleaner looks like in the bowl we're eventually going to have it about there and that'll help us yeah right about there so that'll help us uh, it'll leave an opening where we want to have the the airway come into the bowl okay so i'm going to set that aside that's all ready to go and now we're going to start to mix up the pipe mortar by adding in some water. Now this is a little mm, artsy in a sense. Uh, I, I can't tell you exactly how much water I add. And I do that on purpose because you know you might have minor variations uh, in, in what you weigh out. So I do it drop wise. And by the way, one really important thing, I'm using a metal container here. You can use metal, you can use plastic, you can use glass. Don't use paper or cardboard because that'll absorb the water. And uh, I've had some folks report problems with that. Uh, my friend Kilted Piper Steve was the guy that first alerted me to that. So make sure you use a bowl that does not absorb water. All right, we're gonna put a, just a few drops in the center here. and mix it. This is just plain tap water. If you want to get crazy you could use distilled water or something but it's just not necessary. And you can see that picks up the water pretty quickly and just try to 
disperse that around a bit and we'll add some more. Now we don't want to over uh, wet this. It won't be the end of the world if we over wet it, but it will mean that it's going to take a lot longer for it to set up. And we're not interested in waiting three or four days for this to, to set up. So uh, we're getting close. I'm going to add about the same amount of water again. A little bit more. Hopefully not too much. And eventually this is going to get messy because you got to get your fingers in there to, to do the final mixing. Um, there's just no way you can do it with a spatula. Well, maybe if you're ultra patient you could do it with a spatula. There's no way I can do it with a spatula. Just don't have that level of patience. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to scrape this off and get my fingers dirty. And by all means, wear gloves or whatever you're comfortable with. But there's nothing in here that's toxic. It's just plaster, activated charcoal, and salt. So this is what we're hoping for. You know, we want something that's going to be somewhat rigid and, you know, allow you to kind of form a peak there. Try to get all the powder incorporated. And you've got time when you're working with this. You know, it's not going to immediately solidify. You probably have a good, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes before it starts to, starts to cure on you. There we go. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. So it, it comes off in a, in a chunk like that. It's wet enough that it'll stick together. Absolutely perfect. All right, so now what we're going to do and this is going to be a little hard for me to, to demonstrate, but I'll hopefully be able to give you an idea. I'm just going to take a chunk of this and I'm going to drop it in. And I'm trying to get too much on my background here. And now I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to push that down and try to shape it to the bottom of that bowl. Now I think I mentioned earlier I did sand this so that the bowl is a little bit rough and it'll help that stick. And right now I'm just focusing on sort of making a a dished bottom and not coming up the sides at all. Just trying to get that to lay in the bottom and uh, maybe be a little bit smaller in the center than it is on the sides. Let's see how that looks. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to need a light to... Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to find that pipe cleaner. And I will do that again, the same spatula. And I'm just going to go in and scrape. I know about where it is. Take off the excess. Put in a little bit more than I needed. Now this was not terribly low, uh, which is why I've got so much left over. Um, you know, it was low enough that I think it would cause issues, but it was not, you know, it would have probably been okay. But we want to make sure that this smokes well. So it doesn't take long to do this. It doesn't cause any problems at all with the quality of the smoke doesn't impart any flavor or anything and this particular uh, solution is is pretty long-lasting you know it's not gonna it's not gonna knock out the first time you knock out your pipe or anything like that okay let's see how we're doing here almost there we go 
So now hopefully you can see that I can see that pipe cleaner in the bottom. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. It's a little bit too, too far in there. I'll drop a little bit more down. Fill in the gap that's left. Again, just going around, making sure that I've got like a dished bottom in there. Uh, some folks use a tamper for this, or uh, yeah, a tamper, a golf tee, something like that. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna just rotate that, make sure that it's clear, knock off any excess, and I think I'm I'm happy with that. So hopefully, you can see that okay. Yeah, I think you can see better without my flashlight. Yeah, so that's good. So the bottom is set now. We, we, we're we done that. Now what I want to do is I want to do uh, basically a bowl coating. And the reason I want to do that is that the pipe mortar is really good at building cake. So this stuff is going to pretty quickly build cake. And if you only have it in the bottom, you're going to get a lot of cake in the bottom and you're not going to get anything around the sides. We don't want that. So. We're going to thin this out now. Just add some more water. And the texture I'm looking for here, uh, yogurt, mayonnaise, something along those lines. And this, a little bit more water. And you'll see it didn't take much for this to quickly go to uh, a liquid rather than that sort of clay-like solid that we had. We were right on the edge of that before. Okay, that should be good. And now the really messy part. I'm just gonna take some of this on my finger, stick my finger down inside the pipe, and spread it around. I don't know how this compares to other bowl coatings. I, I know a lot of pipe makers use bowl coatings that include activated charcoal uh, for the same reason that I included it here. It, it, it gives that it gives a surface that the, that can start to carbonize easily or will accumulate carbon easily, and that's what cake really is. It just carbonized tobacco. All right, let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks that looks good to me. It's ugly, as you will see. Um, yeah, it's not a nice smooth surface, but that's okay because after this is set up, we're going to go in there and we're going to sand it. So this this will be fine. All right. So before that sets up, I want to get any uh, of that pipe mortar off the top there. So let me just grab a paper towel. Apply some water to the paper towel. Okay, that's good. We might have to brush the sides a little bit. I might have gotten a little on there, but that's okay. It'll it'll come off fine. Uh, once it's once it's dry, it'll just it'll just brush right off. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the last thing we really need to do with this. So I'm going to, well, that in buffing. So I'm going to let this set, and I like to let this sit for at least 24 hours before I do anything else with the pipe. Uh, 48 hours before I ship a pipe, just, just to be sure that everything is set. But once that's done, this stuff is rock solid. Uh, you, you can treat it just like any other bowl coating. So we're going to pull the pipe cleaner out and go back in from the other end just to make sure we don't have any any pipe mortar stuck in the airway and that's good and we're just gonna let that sit I will then put some blue tape painters tape around the um, the silver band buff this and wax it 
and I'll buff and wax the stem, put it back together, and the pipe will be ready for Jack. So I'm going to let this sit overnight before I do any of that, but you'll be back in just a second. And folks, we have a finished pipe here. Uh, so I've, I've buffed it and waxed it, looking really good. That uh, dog's head figure looks fantastic. We got the pipe mud in the base. Got the the draft hole is is properly placed now. The stem looks great. We got uh, a coat of carnauba on that as well to uh, protect it from oxidizing. It's buffed up nicely. Nice tight fit. And when we put a pipe cleaner in the bowl, you can hopefully see that it is very well centered comes right out where it's supposed to so this pipe is now complete uh, not a lot of work on this one but uh, you know a lot of estate pipes that you may run into would have similar problems to this so I thought it was worth going through the process um, one little tip uh, when you're buffing a pipe like this and I, I will someday do a buffing video I just gotta get things in a situation where I can easily record at the buffer uh, you will find that, that the buffing compounds will build up in the rustications. So what I do after each uh, each buff is I take a toothbrush like the one that I used to clean this, and I'm sorry, I've, I thought I had one here. But I take a toothbrush, here it is. This is actually the one that I used to clean the pipe. And I'll just go ahead and, and scrub those, those rusticated areas carefully just to try to remove any, any compound that builds up. And that gives you a better looking pipe in the end. You don't get a lot of dull spots. So there you have it. This pipe is ready to uh, go off to my friend Jack and I'm actually going to drive out to uh, to his place tomorrow and, and give it to him. So he will be able to smoke it tomorrow and hopefully uh, enjoy it for many years to come. So I once again want to thank Doug Owen at the Cargo Hold for uh, for uh, giving this pipe to, to, to me and to Jack and uh, I'm sure that he's going to really be thrilled by that spaniel on the front. So thank you, Doug. Thank you all for watching, and uh, if you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps get the word out. If you liked the video and you want to see future videos, please make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And we will have more restoration videos to come. So thank you much, and take care.